we now have two very short on uh, questions from civil society. Hello. They'll be up on the screen now. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jane Alma, and I'm in Australia. My question for you is, how will you ensure that civil society participation is valued and not further eroded? I'm asking from the YWCA of Australia as a board director, a civil society organisation that's been involved in the UN for many, many decades, but also as a PhD student at the Centre of Deliberative Democracy and Global Governance at the University of Canberra. My colleagues from that centre will ask the same question in their language. Hello. What then made the Sikra as civil samfundets vigtig deltagelse, påskyndes og ikke undergrams? Merhaba. Sivil toplum katılımının gerçekleştirilmesi ve önemsenmesi için ne yapacaksınız? Namaste. Somut rastlan ko maaş hazip ko rupma, nagrik samaj ko sovay dalay. Kasari sunisit karna onsa. Given the increase in power of private interests and corporations, sometimes overriding the United Nations and nation states. My question is, what can be done with new actions by the United Nations for respect for rule of law and abiding by treaties? Specifically, I'm interested in SDG 4 on education because we're seeing greater incurrence of private interests in public education. Thank you. I'm Jill Christensen from the National Education Association of the United States, a proud member of Education International. Few remarks on the questions from civil society from you, Mr. Mayor. Should I answer right away? Yes. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I want to apologize to the representative of Australia for not answering in this conundrum of questions, the one in civil society, but I knew that the civil society question was coming and uh, it's remarkably similar <laughs> to, the one, uh, to the one that you asked. But I do intend to prioritize UN civil society engagement and uh, I want to refer to the commitment 51 that I have in my platform uh, where, uh, where I commit to working hard to achieve consistent inclusion of civil society. And um, I think that uh, the Secretary General would need to facilitate the development of a consistent standard across intergovernmental bodies for the involvement of civil society. And uh, uh, the gradual development of NGO participation in ECOSOC could serve as an example. Uh, um, I also want to uh, initiate uh, coordination through consultation to achieve uh, consistent inclusion of civil society uh, across the bodies related to economic uh, and social issues. And uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, I, I am certainly, the last thing that I'm going to say, I am certainly uh, not going to be uh, someone not championing the civil society. I'm actually a candidate coming from a civil society. I run a civil society organization right now. Admittedly, not uh, an ECOSOC one, but, uh, but a civil society one. And uh, when it comes to the other question, the, the rule of law and uh, increasing power of private interests and, and corporations, I, I mean, upholding the rule of law, uh, including international rule of law, is, uh, is a matter of principles, is a matter of values, is a matter of how uh, prepared you are to engage in using your uh, podium of Secretary General, which is perhaps the most powerful tool that you have at your disposal uh, to advance certain issues. And, and this is certainly going to be something that uh, I do not intend to, 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 to leave unaddressed. Uh, it is an issue of trust, and it's an issue of values, and it's uh, an issue of uh, uh, how you judge the uh, candidates for Secretary General as to who you think is going to be prepared and ready and how strongly to stand up for what you believe in. Uh, I wouldn't be running for this post if I were not uh, a strong and convicted believer in the rule of law across the board. Okay. Thank you.